Okay, Shannon Vlogs number 57 with Shakespeare, and we're going with Macbeth. Macbeth. Oh, the Scottish play. Um, yeah, so, okay, so I read, I read, I reread Macbeth recently, semi-recently, it's been a while now, and then I watched an adaptation of Macbeth. This is sort of how I'm doing my whole Shakespeare, like, challenge uh, project thing. I guess it's a project because there is an end. I'm planning on reading all of Shakespeare and then watching an adaption if I can, an adaptation if I can find it. I don't know if there's going to be, some of them I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to find one, but so far, the ones I picked, I don't know what number this is. I think I've watched, I did, Titus Andronicus, gentlemen, Two Gentlemen of Verona, and one of, the, and Richard the, the second. So this is the fourth. I should notate that. It's the fourth. Fourth. Oh, I gotta make a list. I have one somewhere. Okay, so Macbeth, otherwise known as the Scottish play. If you're not familiar with what that means, it's bad luck in a theater to actually say the term Macbeth. So when you're in a physical theater, you have to say the Scottish play. Um, it's also set in Scotland, so you got that going on. Um, and for me, this is actually a reread. I read this in high school, and I also saw a Robert Lepage uh, stage version that was put on at U of T at Hard House, which was amazing. But I, it's amazing, but I also barely remember it. I, and rereading this, I barely remember the story of it. I remembered it. It's bloody. I remember that Lady Macbeth is awesome. Those two things also, you know, were very clear in this in this read. Um, but I found it a lot. Uh, I don't know. Like I found it a, a little strange that it's one that I would consider one of my favorites. It's because it's so bloody and it's vengeful. It's actually I would say the central theme of this is tyranny. Um, you know, ruling and wanting to rule at all costs and, you know, doing anything to do that. And I, that's really hard. Like, that's really harsh. And the things that Macbeth and Lady Macbeth do are very harsh. And um, so I guess spoilers for Macbeth. This is one of those, Chase is one of those weird ones to get into spoilers. I don't know how many spoilers I'm actually going to say, but just in case. But it is, it's also one that because of that, it has, um, I was going to say, currently, that darker themes are, are things that we see in popular culture a lot, which is, I'm sure, why uh, one of the reasons why there is the upcoming adaptation of um, Justin Kurzel, who did Snowtown, directed a version with Michael Fassbender and Marion Cotillard, and it was at cons, and it hopefully is coming out later this year. So that's my, one of my reasons why I decided to read it now, as I wanted to become familiar with it again. Um, but I watched in 1980 three BBC version that's available on YouTube. And it was only okay. Like I, I it has um I, I was drawn to it because it stars Nicole Williamson who played Merlin in Excalibur. He's a great actor. Um but I found like it was only okay. Um I did understand some of the secondary characters a lot more, especially I think it was Ross and Luke and Macduff. Although from reading this, Macduff is pretty clear. He's sort of you know, uh, Macbeth's... Okay, so quick synopsis for Macbeth is Macbeth and one of his friends run across the three witches who tell them prophecies, including that Macbeth will be king. Um, this spirals him... Not only will he be king, but he will also not be able to be killed by a man born of woman. So because of this... Uh, Macbeth feels like all powerful, and him and Lady Macbeth plot to kill the current king. <laughs> the cats are trying to get in. <laughs> Should I let them in? Should I let them in? <laughs> they may or may not come in. They might have just had fun playing under the door. I call it the door game. Oh no, they're coming in. Um, so. So yeah, so Lady Macbeth and Macbeth plot to kill Duncan, who's the current king. They kill him, they blame it on someone else, and it sort of cascades this whole, like, you know, Duncan's sons or brothers, whoever's in succession for the line, they flee, and Macbeth and Lady Macbeth just go on a sort of killing rampage and kill a whole bunch of people. Um, so, wow, the cats are just crazy. <laughs> just sort of, like, sniffing around everywhere. It's so funny. 
Um, anyway, so getting back to Macbeth and not the cats, uh, uh, yeah, so, like, they just really want to kill everyone and, and maintain, because he's next in line, he becomes king after killing Duncan, and then sort of, just sort of kills, like, everyone, like, anyone who, who su suspects him or could suspect him, and, you know, whether they're his friends or not his friends, and it's just, like, crazy, like, he's just, you know, a l like, it goes a little, I don't know if you'd say he goes mad or not. Um, Lady Macbeth definitely feels, uh, you know, um, guilty. The out damn spot is from Macbeth and it's her line and it's about her washing the blood off of her hands because I think, I think, I don't know if Macbeth kills Duncan, but then Lady Macbeth kills the guards to blame it on them so which doesn't go well like nobody believes that anyway so there's elements of this I love I love the witches there's a huge element of the supernatural the, the boy oh boy it's oil and trouble like that whole thing is from the witches and Macbeth and I love that this one they didn't use that too much you know the scene that big scene is interesting of course but the whole like prophecy and you know is <laughs> we're just playing it is playtime oh Oh, at the door. <laughs> okay, so it feel, probably feels more interesting to me than other people just to watch the cats, because... Anyway, so... Or the kittens. So, anyway, uh, Lady Macbeth is very... Uh, you know, she feels guilty, um, and... Um, yeah, so I don't know, like, it's weird, because it's just, like, everyone, like, they just kill everyone, like, it just, like, goes into this sort of, like, spiral of killing and killing and killing, and it's kind of, like, like, it's, like, and I'm, like, I like this, like, you know, like, it's, like, wow, life has changed a lot since high school, that that's something that I was really drawn to then, and not so much now, and it's, I guess, one of the things that's been interesting but challenging about um, reading Shakespeare on my own is not to have the context and conversations of thinking like, you know, is this the more important theme, the most important theme? What else is going on here? Because there's things that, like, I might be, like, I love Lady, Mac Lady Macbeth as a character, but she was in it far less than I remember. Um, and I really thought, wow, this is really one of the killer, huh, one of the great uh, female roles in, uh, you know, Shakespeare. But then when I read it and watched it, I'm like, she's not in it too much, and then that felt weird. So there was a lot of things that felt really weird about it. And then, but watching the BBC version, and it, it is available on YouTube, so if you're curious, you can watch it. It just, it wasn't as compelling as I, I thought it would be. Um, I did understand some of the better, some of the secondary characters, as I said. Um, the successors that flee, one goes to England, and you know, that sort of made a little more sense. I'm like, why would he go to England? Why? You know, and, and it feels like there, you know, there's going to be all these battles. But then, as I've sort of noticed from some, the Shakespeare that I've been rereading is that they set up the battles, but there's no huge fight sequences because it's all dialogue, people. <laughs> it's all people talking, so there's no time for fighting because they're all like, oh, you know, they might say, like, the, the army is ready or going over here, but, the, you know, what happens is you see that, like, you might see an image of that, but then it's like two guys talking to each other, you know, <laughs> so it's kind of funny. But anyway, it's just in, in the context of the upcoming adaptation, definitely in the trailers, they have, like, these huge battlefield type scenes, and I'm like, are there going to be no dialogue? Is there going to be no dialogue? Are they going to add dialogue? I don't know. Anyway, it looks amazing, and I'm still really looking forward to the adaptation. And there are tons of adaptations of this. Um, uh, also, another one is um, Kurosawa did Throne of Blood, and that's an adaptation of Macbeth. And um, also, of course, very bloody. <laughs> so it's weird. It's weird. Like, I, I still think it's great. I still, like, rated it five stars. Um, and I, But I didn't quite enjoy it as much as I thought, both reading it and the version that I watched. But I'm still looking forward to the new one. So anyway, it's making me rethink this sort of how I'm doing this Shakespeare exploration because I've, I'm realizing that just 
simply reading it and watching it may not quite be enough for me to get what I want to get out of the experience. I think there is a conversation piece, a dialogue piece, and whether that's looking up people's papers, you know, or, or commentary on it, um, or, you know, engaging in conversations on Goodreads or something. I don't know. Like, I don't know if there's any Shakespeare book clubs. I always feel like, a, like, like the, I couldn't lead something like that because I certainly don't know enough about Shakespeare to, to do that. But I'm, there's some, like, you know, themes I like, you know, this is what I thought, but, like, I don't know, is that really what was going on? And that's one of the great things about Shakespeare is that there's so many different takes you can, you can, so many different roads you can take, so many different things you can choose to emphasize in theater in general. Um, you know, you start with the dialogue and you build up from there and you can build in so many different directions. So it's one of the great things about it. So anyway, that's my thoughts on Macbeth. I will leave the link below for the um, BBC version that I watched and I'm dying to see the new one. I can't wait. It looks so good. A new trailer came out recently and it just like, ah. It's going to be so awesome. It's going to be so awesome. And all of those three people, I don't know if you've heard, but <laughs> Dustin Cruzel, the director, and Michael Fassbender and Marion Cotillard are all going to be doing an Assassin's Creed movie next year. <laughs> I'll just leave you with that. Thanks for watching.